So we talked previously how you can get TDS keeping track of your DOM and having it in sync with your application state. So this is where reactivity comes in and reactivity is one of Swell's superpowers. So if you're unfamiliar, reactivity is how you keep your DOM in sync with your application state. So for example, when you're developing an application and you add a song to a playlist, you want the change to be reflected immediately. So you would have to write all this boilerplate code to update the user interface before you even start developing your application, so meaning your business logic. And that's what JavaScript frameworks like Swell do for you, so you don't have to think about it. So Swell's reactivity is based on assignments, and we've already done this before actually. So you can see we declared here count plus equals one, but that's the same as saying count plus one. And when Swell sees the count variable and sees it being reassigned, it knows it should update it. So if you click, it works, right? But this comes with a caveat, because we need to assign a value for Swell to pick it up. So methods like push won't trigger an update until we reassign it. So we can avoid doing that extra step by using the spread operator to keep existing items and add a new item, like you see in this example. So let's just go through that example. So you can have a let list, and you're going to have some beautiful frameworks such as React and Vue. Then we're going to have a function that's going to handle the click. And let's just create the p tag. It's going to show our list. It's really awesome how Swell stringifies the array for us because, as you can see, we can just log the list value out. So that's a really nice feature. It can also add a button. I'm going to say click. And I wish this editor would stop doing this, but this is alright. So you can say on click is handle click. So let's just expand it. So first let's see what's not working. So we can do a list push. We can also add our beautiful swell to the list. But if we do that, we can see nothing is updating. So we can reassign it and then it should work. It's not like the JavaScript code isn't working, it's just that Svelte isn't updating the user interface. Because we can log the list, we can do console log of the list here, and if you pay attention to the console, we can see it first started with React View, and then it added Svelte. And then we ran this, so Svelte knows to update the user interface. Doing this is tedious, so we can use the JavaScript spread operator. So we can say like this so we're reassigning list and we're saying hey each item you have in list please spread it and just add swell to the end and it should work the same so sometimes you need to change a value based on other values and this is also referred to as a computed property so swell has reactive declarations using the dollar syntax which is valid javascript label syntax that swell stole for itself so using that syntax is just saying rerun this code whenever any of the reference values change so we can go through that example. Let's just create another script. So we're going to have state, right? So we can say state and then let items one, two, three, four. And then we can have a value that's going to be an amount items.length. And then we also want the function to be able to add an item. Just like before, we're going to spread the items and say items length. To get the length of the array so we can add another number to the end and then we're going to create p tag we're going to say the amount is amount then we're going to add a button that says add item with an event listener on click add item so we can see if we press add item nothing is happening because Swell doesn't know it should update the user interface. We can use the reactive declaration using the dollar sign symbol. So instead of let amount, we can say dollar, which is also going to declare the variable for us. And then we can see it works. So that's how reactive declarations work in Swell. Think about it as giving Swell dependencies to watch and rerun the code when the values changes, like in the next example. So we can clear what we have here. We can say script. For example, we can just copy this data because it would be tedious to write out. And then let's say, for example, we want a computed value is going to be the duration of all the album tracks combined. So we can say album length, get album length, 
and we're going to pass album to the function. So Svelte is going to see this on the right and say, okay, you passed an album and that's going to be the value I'm going to track. And anything that's going to happen to album, so this here, when this changes, is going to update the computed value. So you can say, for example, function get album length, takes in an album, and we can just copy this part because this is really irrelevant. Yeah, so we can copy this entire function. So basically, this is just using a reducer that's going to add all the length of the album and then it's going to destructure from that array minutes and seconds and it's going to return minutes and seconds. I just wanted to use this example to show you in the template how you can output those values. And then we're also going to have a function that's going to add a track. Let me just, then I'm going to reassign. We want all the previous tracks and let's pass in an object that's going to be track, say track four, and it's going to have a length of 420. And then if we scroll more, we can add more things to our template. So we can say, and then we can say album length is and then we can get the album length from album length minutes and album length seconds seconds period and then we just need to add a button with an event handler let's say add track and on click we want to add track so if we add tracks, this album line should increase, right? And that's it. Awesome. Another cool thing you can do is log a value whenever it changes. So it's easy to see what's going on. So if we add a script, you can say the count is equal to zero. And then we can use a reactive statement to say console log. When should it log? Of course, when count changes, right? So you can say button click and we can use an event listener that's in line so you can say on a click and we can say anonymous function count plus equals one so if you look at the console you should see the value update so you can also have reactive blocks for example if we remove this and then take this example we can just place it here so you can see it logged out in the console. The count is one, two, three, four. And then it's going to restart the count. 